What do you think about AI in well, general? Uh, AI in general, again, we're, uh, I believe, uh, at a very early stage within the AI uh, boom, and there's a lot that could, have, could and will happen. Right. Uh, now, in, con in context of AI within cybersecurity, the game is a bit different, and I believe uh, there, there is a lot of hype uh, within the industry, okay. as opposed to how certain tools perform um, within a client environment, right. and uh, which is the re reason why many large organizations are investing their own data scientists and resources to build custom models within right. um, within say, security environments. Okay. Now, um, from my insights, I've done a lot of research looking at pat reading pattern documents of existing um, right. various tools within the industry. Um, and correlating that, that with our past information as to how these models could work. And, um, and I can give an example, for instance, okay, uh, yeah. of a real client, uh, many clients have been impacted by this. So there is a, say there could, there's a, there could be a vendor, and mm -hmm. uh, for instance, their shipping, their, their solution could be anomaly detection right. within a certain environment. And now, uh, they, usually with these onboarding processes, these vendors could provide their own analysts to perform some curation or some filtering or aggregation of data to have contextual alerts from these tools. Right. So the onboarding process looks beautiful. From okay. a client environment, oh, we're getting all these insights, all these specific attacks. This is great. I right. mean, it's a great onboarding process. But then once you remove these expert analysts, it's very hard for many uh, end clients to maintain that service. Okay. Because the expectation is this tool's going to work by itself. But that is not usually, that might not necessarily be the case. Uh, reason I mean, there are various reasons behind that. One could be uh, like the existing models don't generalize well within an environment, a specific client environment. Also, um, it could be due to the data quality as well within a client environment, and there are other reasons. So again, there's a mix between there's a chain like a huge delta between what's written on white papers for, for certain uh, clients, right. what's on white papers, what's on uh, say the pattern documents which we can see, and also the client end client experience. Okay. So, because many people talk about AI, when they refer to AI, doesn't matter if it's a company or vendor or academia, they usually, many people think AI is a magic pill, right? So, when, the silver a, a, bullet. Yeah, silver bullet, <laughs> all kind of things. When you apply that, all those difficult problems gone, right? Yes. So, you can get that right. But specifically for AI, why is, from what you say, AI or machine learning or still in a little bit earlier stage? There are many algorithms. Uh, still under development. Yes. And on the side, is uh, the, the, I mean, certain algorithms are there, but there's still a lot of problems which, which okay. could need to be solved. Sure. And yes. And but on the other side is specifically when you're applying AI to a cybersecurity field, there are probably some unique challenges or difficulties you are facing. So can you give us some examples on this side of when you come applying AI to cybersecurity? Absolutely. So uh, applying AI within cybersecurity is a different ball game in uh, compared to applications of AI within other environments. For instance, image classification or natural language processing. Right. Now, what makes uh, application of AI within cybersecurity challenging uh, are, are, are the following. Uh, one is um, imbalanced data sets. So in, in our case with cybersecurity, we deal with highly imbalanced data sets where the, the ratio of true attacks to, uh, to uh, regular normal usage could be highly, highly, highly uh, negligible, could be up to 0.001% of true attacks within a large data set. Okay. And in our case, data, the data sets are usually highly dimensional, in which case find you making sense of that little a uh, little amount of data and then performing right. some form of supervised learning to understand that could be very, very challenging. So that's one aspect. We have the highly dimensional data sets. Another is we deal with dynamic environments where, um, the, uh, for instance, uh, d data usage or typical like user behavior or how devices behave in essence keep on changing as we onboard new technologies within an environment. Okay. Also, hackers are, are constantly adopting their uh, their techniques to bypass uh, events. So again, like if you look at attack patterns, it could they could be different for uh, like uh, as we uh, look at it from a time perspective. So over the years, these the patterns would change with technology. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's two. So one was the highly imbalanced data sets. One is the dynamic environment. Okay. Another is uh, 
uh, the correlation of attacks within different environments or different clients could be different. For instance, uh, attackers are getting highly um, targeted and sophisticated, so the, the techniques being used in one client might not necessarily imply that the same, exact same techniques would be used in another environment. Okay. In which case, uh, I, from clients I've heard, the overlap is not not as much as demonstrated within the industry. Okay. But, but, but it certainly helps to get that context from different clients and aggregate it into our existing solutions. Right. Uh, so that's another aspect. Um, an example would be, for instance, if you have a cat here, like uh, in the real world, we look at a cat in a few instances of cats, and then we understand that this is a cat, and we correlate those patterns all throughout different images within image classification. The same thing cannot might not be correlated within uh, within uh, the context of cybersecurity, where where a true attack in one environment might not necessarily be the exact true attack. In, in another the client environment. Okay, so it depends on the context and the environment. Absolutely. So uh, to put, so these are the three points. But then context is a huge problem. For instance, uh, different clients might have might have different uh, threat vectors they're concerned with. Mm -hmm. In which case, their model should be tuned with the client data, which is always changing and is different mm -hmm. for different clients based on their environments. Um, as well as the attack vectors they care about the most, in which case there, there's another element to that as well. Uh, another problem is uh, the, the notion of data quality. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it, labels are very hard, are hard right. to find within, within cybersecurity environments, and uh, just with the, the amount of data which is getting, getting passed on in data leaks, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, ensuring that the data quality is, uh, is, uh, is good is very important because it actually impacts the the end model and and the efficiency itself. So many times it's not the algorithm; it could actually be the the, the, the quality of the right. data and ensuring that we we remove noise and and perform right. the tasks. Okay, in AI field, uh, it can apply to many domains. So cybersecurity is one of the domain it apply to, yes. and specifically with what you mentioned there. If I can summarize, the also there several areas. Mm -hmm. One is uh, from the data quality, data source, uh, how can you get a qualified data to train your algorithm? Mm -hmm. So that's definitely one area for the input side. Yes. And the algorithm itself, of, of course, have a lot of uh, things can improve on. But also, even you come up with something, uh, the environment may be changed. Yes. And when you apply the, that algorithm to different contexts, you may not get the same result. 100%. Uh -huh. So. Um, so that's a, like for instance the maintainability of your machine learning model is a, right. is a huge problem. So like the the way in which uh, the the devices within a client environment or or clients uh, or users uh, operate keeps on changing. One could be for instance um, uh, for an example could be for instance a sales executive opens up a new account in in, in a remote location. So that's right. a, that's a new behavior and it would, it would and once the first account is open, perhaps there could be more sales within that region and then the way in which uh, uh, users uh, share da data, for instance, could could change. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the environment is always changing based on user uh, user behavior as well as new devices. For instance, an enterprise client might decide to onboard new IoT devices, in which case the the data would change. And um, another area is again as hackers, hackers are constantly updating mm -hmm. their maneuvers as well. Yeah. And um, so that's the interesting part, right? <laughs> so a lot of uh, vendors right now. Yes. Uh, regardless is it's true or not, they always say, okay, we already have AI, <laughs> AI-driven or AI-embedded solutions. Mm -hmm. But from hacker point of view, yes. how can they evade those uh, solutions, even though there's an AI component there? Yes. I don't know if they leverage AI or not, but how can they uh, evade those AI-powered uh, solutions? So that's a great question. Um, so keeping conversation at a very high level, uh, if you look at um, the the sheer number of events, for instance, if you look at a large enterprise client, right, and you have these, uh, from a machine learning perspective, for instance, you have these decision boundaries kind of identifying clusters of user patterns. Right. A small deviation, there could be many deviations from the norm, and many of which could be true, for instance, the example we provided with a security executive, like a sales executive opening up a new account in a remote location, right, that could be, that's that's a legitimate use case, but oh, that so would be a deviation yeah, from okay. the norm, in which case that would be, uh, an alert. So there are so many alerts happening. So uh, as attackers are getting more sophisticated, they could uh, they, they just need to uh, perform their tasks in a more um, um, like a controlled manner. An example could be, for instance, if you penetrate into a 
a server now you could look at a web block for the server to see where that that web server would like which other nodes it would normally communicate with mm -hmm. and in that regard there could be some intelligence which could be in place so that uh, that hop uh, hop is done at a time which is of least uh, which correlates to least abnormality abnormality within the within the regular user so that's a way to evade uh, attacks so there's uh, hackers getting sophisticated in that regard another could be uh, is uh, adversarial machine learning in which case hackers are leveraging certain techniques to understand decision boundaries of okay. uh, machine learning uh, models and then uh, thereby lo looking to looking at models as a black box and seeing how you could evade those move around those uh, decision mm -hmm. boundaries so that's uh, another there another aspect is data poisoning in which case machine learning models are constantly getting updated based on data okay so if there's a way to spoof data okay so that these models keep on learning something abnormal then it could really it would correlate to a flood of false positives uh, in which case you have the analysts, they're looking at all these alerts and many of which are already false positive and then that would uh, tax the analysts to com and deviate their attention towards something which is uh, not true. Right. And in, in that environment there, there could be opportunities for hackers to leverage that time window and perform some sophisticated attack which would get. Uh, which would not correlate to a, a more you know a prominent alert or or analysts already have a lot of false positives to look at in which case it could bypass uh, uh, detection okay good interesting because uh, <clears throat> that's actually back to how to evade based on what you said is looking at uh, how ai is working so one way you mentioned is to uh, to pollute or like uh, to find the vulnerability in the data input, mm -hmm. right? So try to pollute the data or give you the wrong data, false positive. So that's one. Another, if they know how you come up with this algorithm mm -hmm. or the way you do the thing, they can manipulate. Uh, on a high level, if they, they, they can perform some, there are already algorithms which uh, hackers are using. There's research papers on it too, leveraging adversarial machine learning right. where uh, hackers can basically sensor and data and look at the look at the results right. and based on that they can come up with the the decision boundary right. of certain classifiers now th this is done uh, th there's already research on it from a research perspective looking at machine learning right. models as, as, as a black box and then do understanding okay. the decision boundaries right. um, and then from there on uh, basically understanding ways to you know to evade these uh, these uh, detection uh, mechanisms uh, one could be, for instance, uh, uh, this is a, like a parallel conversation, for instance, you have a classifier which detects a cat or not a cat. So mm -hmm. in which case, if you keep on sending images of cat, you know that this is great, but then if you keep on changing the image of the cat or certain pixels, mm -hmm. uh, there, there would be a case where, or if you add noise to that image, there would be cases where, uh, although it looks like a cat, but in reality the classifier has some misinterpretation of it just based on the noise and based on how these algorithms are okay. are, are being used to identify these Interesting. Uh, images and the same uh, technique is uh, can be correlated within the context of cybersecurity okay so it feels like uh, not only we need a pen test for normal like uh, enterprise solutions you need a pen test for ai as well so when you have this solution you need a pen test for that uh, absolutely yeah. there are certain frameworks which which can be leveraged in order to understand right. the confidence levels within these models okay um, so there could there's some black box uh, testing mechanisms which which can be leveraged wonderful so uh, we talk about some like a uh, common problems with uh, how to apply a AI to cybersecurity. You also highlight uh, some uh, techniques that the hackers can evade the current uh, uh, AI powered solutions. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, to sing. We learned a lot today. Thank you. Thank you very much yeah. for having me. Thank you. Brian.